Let's do some more controller mappings. I'm going to add one more mapping to a URL and let's have it map to a method and see that in, ex in execution. I'm going to add a topic controller which maps to the slash topics URL that we looked at in the demo app. When a request comes to slash topics, when it's a get request, I want to respond with a list of topic objects. Right? It's going to be a JSON response, which is an array of topic objects. So let's do that in this video. I'm going to create a new package here and uh, well, a new class called topic controller. And I'm going to put this in the package. IO Java brains dot spring boot starter dot topic. And click finish. And up here, you know the steps to make this a controller. I'm going to have an at rest controller to make this a spring rest controller. And here I can have a simple method here public. Let me make this a string. Get all topics which returns. all topics and I'm going to mark this as request mapping and the URL is going to be slash topics and once I import this, this is all it takes to map the slash topics request that we get from the app to return a simple string to use all topics. Of course, we need a list of topics over here. I'm just putting a string here to make sure that this works fine. So I'm going to stop and start the application again. Now instead of hello, I'm gonna to choose topics and execute it. I'm gonna get the string back. So this works just like we expect it to. Now, this is not good enough, right? We wanna we want to return a list of topics. And ideally what we'd like to do is connect to the database and get the records from the database. But we are not tackling the database part of it yet. What I'm gonna do is hard code a bunch of topic objects and then return that list. Now, in order to hard code a bunch of topic objects, I need topic objects. I need to create a class called topic. It's basically the object. It's the template for the JSON for each topic information that I want to return, right? What does a topic contain? It contains like a name, it contains some kind of an ID, some kind of a code, and some kind of a description. So that's good for now. So what I'm going to do is create that class. I'm going to create a topic class. Go here, new Java class, and uh, I'm going to call this topic. And uh, here I'm going to add some member variables. I'm going to have a private string ID, name, and I'm going to have description. Now I'm going to have getters and setters as well as constructors. So I'm going to have generate getters and setters for all of them. And I'm going to generate constructors from all of them. And of course, I'm going to have a no arg constructor. Just so that the object is easier to initialize. And this is my topic model object. So what do I have here? I have three fields. The ID, name, and the description, all of them are strings. I have a no arc constructor and a constructor which takes those arguments and initializes the object. And I have getters and setters. All right, now what I'm going to do is return a list of topics from this controller so that it's not returning a string anymore, it's returning a list of topics. So let me change this return type to say list of topic. I'm going to import the list. So what we're doing here is basically setting the return type of the method to what the response should be. In the previous tutorial, we had to return a string called hi. So the method that was handling that HTTP request had a return type of a string. In this tutorial, I want the slash topics URL to return a list of topic objects. So the method that I'm mapping to the slash topics needs to have a return type, which is 
the list of topic objects. And what the Spring MVC framework is going to do is when it maps this request, right? When there is a topics request, it maps this method, executes the method, and takes that return object. That return object, whatever is this type, is going to get converted to JSON automatically, right? You don't have to do anything. The fact that you've annotated this class as a REST controller means that whatever you return is going to get automatically converted to JSON and sent back as the HTTP response. So all I need to do is return that list over here and that'll do. So uh, let me create a simple list of topic objects over here. So I'm going to say arrays dot as list, a bunch of constructor calls. I'm going to say new topic of, um, of course I need to pass in the code. I'm going to say topic is spring, the spring framework. And then the description is going to be description. I have a bunch more over here. So I'm going to have. All right. So I have three topic objects which I've created as a list. So I'm using the arrays dot as list method to create this list in line and I'm calling the constructor on the topic class to create new topic objects. Now this list that I'm creating on the fly is being returned by this get all topics method. Now when I call slash topics the next time after I save this and run this again, Spring MEC is going to call this method and what this method returns is a list of topic objects and Spring MVC is going to take the effort to convert this list of topic objects into a JSON and the JSON is what gets returned. Now I'm going to save this class, stop the execution and run it again and I'm going to open the browser and I'm going to refresh the page. Now here you see I get an array of objects which are in the JSON format. Now how did the JSON conversion happen? Again like I said it's something that Spring MVC does for us. It happens automatically. So this is how much easy it is to actually create a RESTful API with Spring MVC. All you have to do is create a controller for it and map a particular request to a method and your business logic happens in that method. In the further unit, we're going to change this to actually make a, a call to the database and get the actual data. But for now, I just wanted to illustrate how the controller works by just hard coding the data that's returned. But the mapping and all is just how it should be in an actual application.